Look, we've had, uh, you know, the, the president, we had a new administration come in. The president promised on two different fronts he was going to change America. He was going to change it economically. He was going to uh, decrease unemployment. He was going to increase our GDP. He was going to uh, reduce regulation and taxation on businesses and individuals to grow the economy. And I have to tell you, it's worked out better than I, even I could have imagined. Unemployment down to 3.8 percent, lowest in 17 years. We're on track to getting it down the lowest maybe in even 50 or 60 years. Uh, our GDP growth uh, this quarter may be as high as 4 percent again. Remember, the last administration's economic advisors actually said it probably could never be more than 2 percent. It's actually going to be 4 percent. Uh, you know, we're in the strange situation now where we have more job openings than people who are seeking jobs. Uh, so, we, we, so on the economic front, things are going very, very well. On the foreign policy front, I think the president has, has made some breakthroughs that are historic. Uh, no one has sat down with the North Korean premier. The president is doing it this week. Uh, in terms of uh, Russia and the Ukraine situation, this president decided that he is going to uh, provide the Ukrainians lethal defensive weapons. If you look at Syria, the president said we are going to drive ISIS into the ground in Syria. We eliminated ISIS in Syria. If you look at Iran, the president said we have to negotiate a better uh, deal uh, in the, uh, for the Iranian nuclear pro uh, program. Uh, I think we're on the verge of getting the Iranians to actually agree to a much more stringent uh, deal in return for uh, reducing our sanctions. If you look at the South China Sea, uh, again, the last administration refused to stand up to China uh, taking predominance in the South China Sea. Remember, 25 percent of the world's um, maritime traffic goes through that uh, and, and goods. Uh, they, they just landed their first uh, new bomber on one of the islands they built, and the President's response is actually to send in the Pacific Fleet, uh, do maneuvers there just to show China that they are not, that they're attempt to predominate that very important trade route is not going to be unopposed. Well, you know, I, I'm, again, and I'm no trade expert, uh, you know, the, the, the tariffs uh, uh, can potentially, if, if it doesn't play out, if it plays out well, this could be very good for the first congressional district because actually, you know, most people don't realize, for instance, China has refused to import our poultry for uh, several years now for no real good reason except they just don't want, they want to harm, they, they want to, you know, advantage their industry over ours. Uh, so if the tariff, if, if this tariff play plays out, uh, we could use it to gain some economic trading advantage. Uh, I hope that's true. I just don't know enough about that, about, uh, about trade. Uh, that's not that's not my specialty. It's not the committee I sit on. Uh, so that that I wish were, were was a little was a little more easy to understand, and the pathway to success was a little clearer to see. But on a lot of the other policies, I think the president has done exactly what he said he would do. I I think we should have dealt with immigration. Hopefully, in the next few weeks, we will, uh, and that that will be to uh, make sure that we secure the border. We have interior enforcement. We end some of the uh, visa programs that we've had, and that we provide some. Uh, uh, th for those children who are protected under the DACA program, that we provide some deal of protection so that they don't, they're not always looking over their shoulder for deportation. Yeah. Look, I, look, I don't agree with, with some of the tweeting that goes on, but I will tell you, Washington was not civil under the last administration. I mean, we, we know the hostility between the administration and the Republican majority in the House. Uh, you know, there can be superficials, yeah, on the superficial, when you look at it on the surface, there is, there, one could say there's less civility now, but I disagree. I think if you look at, at, the, at the total, uh, the last administration was not civil to people who it, who, with whose opinions it disagreed. And I, I think that uh, the, the last element this president needs to show is an element of leadership on a bipartisan basis. What do I mean? I mean that, uh, you know, whether it was President Reagan or President Bush or President Clinton, they were all were able to work uh, with the minority parties uh, that, that existed at the time, uh, or, the, or the opposing majority party at, at the time. I think, uh, and people in Washington pretty commonly understand that the last administration didn't. Uh, I think the president had made some outreaches uh, to, to the uh, Democrats this time, especially to negotiate, uh, uh, I mean, famously, he's, he, he wanted to open up immigration negotiations, wanted to open up other negotiations negotiations and was rebuffed. Uh, I think, I hope at some point in the near future everybody gets together and says, yeah, actually we have, we, have, we do have to work together. You know, it, it is time to bury the hatchet. Let's go ahead, roll up our sleeves, deal with the deficit, uh, deal with our long-term debt, uh, you know, make sure that, uh, that we're providing health care uh, to people who are
otherwise couldn't afford it. I mean, to uh, solve the immigration issues, an issue on the on the Eastern Shore, for instance, H two B visas, temporary work visas, very very important. All caught up in all caught up in the immigration fight. You know, gee, if we don't pass comprehensive immigration bill, we're not going to pay. We're not going to take up this small element of. Uh, it's not even immigration law because these are not immigrants; they're temporary workers. We're not even going to take this up. That doesn't make sense. I mean, in a perfect world, you'd go. These are completely separate issues. We have to, you know, we have a bipartisan agreement to fix this one. Let's fix this one. If we're not going to agree on this one, that's one thing. Let's go ahead and fix this one. Look, the the fact of the matter is, uh, there is, there is a, 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 obviously periods of turmoil after new administration, especially in the first two years, first midterm election. But uh, the races that are normally spoken about, whether it's Alabama, whether it's uh, uh, the Pennsylvania Six, the the uh, suburban Pittsburgh, what they share in common is that there were open seats. That uh, there was no the, the district did, didn't uh, have the chance to say, well, you know, we actually don't like the job our representative is doing. We're going to hire a different one. Uh, I think my record in support of the of the uh, communities, businesses, economies of the first congressional district is very strong. Whether it's the agriculture, poultry, tourism, uh, again, uh, just when you look at uh, uh, at the work I've done to support the first congressional district, uh, the choice is not an open. It's not an open seat choice. This is, you know, has Congressman Harris done what he said he was going to do for the first district and defend our economy and our interests, or is he not? And I think in the past elections, I've been honored because the, the majority of people have said yes, he has. Uh, so they've they've made the choice to rehire me twice. Uh, I'm hoping they make the choice to rehire me a third time. Thank you. All right.